Hi, I'm Alex. Welcome back. The first thing I will say is that in this analysis I have completely wiped the comic from my memory. In my head, there's only the memory of the adaptation of Edgar Wright made in 2010. Yeah, 10 years already. I can easily say that this movie is one of my favorites. The casting is perfect. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Brie Larson, Anna Kendrick, Chris Evans. And the screenplay and the cinematography work together in a way that perhaps only Edgar Wright can pull off. That man is a genius. When we say adaptation, it may sound like something simple. Just copy the book, and that's it. And nothing could be further from reality. How many adaptations over the years have been disastrous? It seems that creating an adaptation is a difficult task. Especially with a comic like a Scott Pilgrim, it should trend with any screenwriter. Just thinking about it... But why, you may ask? Why is so complicated about this comic? Well, I just need to mention two things. Loss of the narrative world and thus the information through the movie. The amount of information that we are going to receive in just two hours is overwhelming. Between characters, events, backstories, relationship, it's a lot. And distributing it consistently is quite a challenge. Let's first define the genre and the plot. Remember, the plot and the genre are not the same although they may be identical. In Scott Pilgrim, the genre and the plot share love and action. And of course, comedy is part of the genre. Believe it or not, Scott Pilgrim is a romantic comedy. Now, the structure. How are we gonna analyze this whole thing? Well, sadly, we will use the three-act paradigm. This paradigm is the common one that we all know. Introduction, climax, and resolution. A little story about it, Aristotle was the first one to write about it in his book of the poetics. And being completely honest, I don't like to use this. Like I have said before, it is too ambiguous. But in this case, we're gonna use it just because Ramona Abel X has half numbers. And I wanna focus on that. Before that, let's see our first step. Use the titles in your favor. We already know who our protagonist is, just for the name of the movie. Introduction. This act is about all the information we need to know about the main character, the five W's. I know, I know, this one does not start with W, but it has one, so it counts. First scene. We have a main protagonist joined by the title, so the first thing we need to see is about him. They use an arrow to help us with four Ws. Not so long ago, in the mysterious land of Toronto, Canada, Scott Pilgrim was dating a high schooler. We get a glimpse of Scott's personality as he talks about knives, his girlfriend. She's Chinese. Wicked. And he is completely and absolutely clueless. We also know a large part of the personalities of some secondary characters. Scott lives with Wallace, and he asks him to please don't mention the seven-year-old thing to anyone. Her sister calls immediately to ask what's going on with the seven-year-old thing. Who told you? Wallace, duh. That gossipy bitch. <laughs> You know me? We begin to see lightly the loss of the narrative world. In their conversation, we learn more about knives. But the most important one, the big breakup. When she questioned him for dating her, love or attraction are not part of his response. Simple. It is established from the beginning that Scott does not have romantic feelings towards her. This information will be important later when Ramona appears, especially to convince us that we should aspire for Ramona and not knives. We have met the protagonist, his closest friends, and his girlfriend. Now we need to care about him. Weakness and need. The internal conflicts. Weakness is something he must overcome at the end of the story, or during the story. In this case, his breakup with Envy. Need is something that he wants and achieves at the end. Love will be what Scots want. They are simple, common, and extremely relatable. Knives admire Scott. Maybe that's why he does go out with her. And of course, more evidence of how clueless Scott is. I've never even kissed a guy. Me neither. I mean, it's kind of funny. I hate breaking it for you. He's an idiot. It seems that he does not have the best record with breakups. So the writers are making me love him soon before showing me his true colors. That brings me to the self-revelation. This is not the same as character development. The character development is the process he embarks to change, and self-revelation is the opportunity to show his real self. But we will explain this better in another video. 
So subscribe so you don't miss it when I post it. Wait, you subscribe? Wow, thanks. That was really nice. So yeah, self-revelation. It's easy. Scott must improve as a person. A basic self-revelation in romantic movies. Turning point. Or, in another paradigm, it would be the inciting incident. The event that changed everything. In romantic stories, it's mostly when the boy meets girl. Scott has this weird dream where he sees Ramona, to later find her in the library, and he's so shocked because she is real. The girl of his dream is real, and he's so immersed of the knowledge of her that for transition happened that he hardly notices. The beautiful use of transition. If feathering and film transition are something you are passionate about, you should watch at Edgar Wright Cinematography. He's one of the best in the field. Climax. In this paradigm, everything that happens in the movie happens here. Wow, that's some kind, kind of mean. At the party, Scott learns Ramona's name and that even she is at the party. He approaches to talk to her and it doesn't go well. I like how they use the shot to establish how awkward and uncomfortable everything is. She leaves the party. And Scott begins the investigation, asking all the party guests about her. And this is so typical and yet so good. It's dynamic and accomplishes the objective, which is tell as much as possible about Ramona. Guys, the cliche is not about the elements of a plot or genre. It is the way to use them. Julie forbids him from approach Ramona because he always ends his relationship very badly. And Kim is one of them. Now the salty comments make sense. Wallace comes home drunk and Scott begins to tell him about this girl. Then you should break up with your fake high school girlfriend. And my boy Scott is not even listening. I'm going to be honest. I had completely forgotten about knives in this part until Wallace mentioned it. And it's very striking how the constant fake high school girlfriend from friends completely sells that Knives is not a real girlfriend. We aspire for him to get Ramona, simply because of his reaction to her. We are excited that he is excited. The empathy that a character can achieve is witchcraft, if the weakness and need are present correctly. My moral values went out of the window and I didn't even notice it. His sister immediately calls to question him about dating two girls. He confused as how she knew. I told you. Wallace, stop! He's not even conscious. Whatever. Why we accept that? It is not an impossible action, but it's not real. And for the same reason that it's not real, the audience is more accessible to believe it. When people watch a movie, they are not expecting a mirror for reality. It is not part of the experience they seek. But not for that reason, one can put anything on the screen and expect the viewer to buy it. That's why I insist so much on the loss of the narrative war. The credibility of our story hangs in that. And the world of Scott is full of situations that needs to be sold to the audience correctly. Otherwise, they will stop seeing it. Because it's stupid. To establish the loss of the narrative war, it needs to be gradually. So the viewer gets introduced in the story. First, we saw it at the beginning, when the sofa moved away. Then, the animated titles, the abrupt transitions, and the mysterious phone calls. They are going too small to big. Scott ordered a package from Amazon when an email arrives, explaining something important. Boring. But again, on the date with Knives, Scott seems distant and disinterested, even tried to break up with her. Ramona brings his package, and he managed to convince her to hang out with him. They start talking about their past. They are making a connection. That's why the door appears. It is a symbolism of something new. They go to Ramona's house. She offers him tea to warm up and gives him a large leash of different flavors. And I can easily say that half of those are in my pantry. This is coffee, by the way. They start kissing and Scott sees hearts and music. I guess it is the typical representation of fireworks and bells to express graphically how in love he is. Scott invites her to his gig at night and Ramona is kind of surprised. You have a band. Yeah, we're terrible. Please come. And well, of course, another musician to the list. Have you realized that all Ramona's sex have something to do with music or performance in general? She gives him her number with seven X's at the bottom. Yeah, baby, for the shadowing. At night, Ramona shows up, but also does knives. I swear to God, I keep forgetting her. It's just me, just me, yeah?
and it's so freaking awkward. I love it. I will leave this video here. I think it has been clearly expressed the way to introduce the viewer little by little into this craziness and how they accomplish it. In the following video, I will explain the seven evil exes and more. I hope you have learned one or many things. With nothing else to say, bye.